Visual FMEA. The screen you're looking at is the user interface. This is the template that will be populated. This is a typical FMEA layout. It's within Excel, so any layout can be created. And it's a user interface that populates it. But not only will it populate an FMEA, the actual application, if I just show you the process flow script, you'll also get the ability to populate a process flow with the data. Let's show you how it's done. It's as simple as a right mouse click, add operation, and type in the description of that operation. Right mouse click again, add operation, type in next operation. You'll notice that these operations are incrementing in tens. That's because I've got it set in my site configuration for this particular uh, report style to increment operation numbers in tens. The same can be done for process steps. I can take each one of these operations and break it down into process step numbers. So if that's uh, stores, we will stock card and release material. You notice here symbols. These symbols can be fully customized by you. Uh, these come as default, but like I say, the descriptions, the symbols, the colors can all be changed. I'll just do that as a operation and a move in one. Uh, we'll go top 20. I'll break that down into load material as a move. Let's go back up here and add another process step. And we will cut the bar. We'll do that as an operation. And then what about unload and inspect? Do that as a <coughs> excuse me, move and inspect. Now this, like I said, is the user interface. This is where you enter the uh, information. You build the relationships up. Visibility is you understand <coughs> what's uh, in each operation there. But the output using the workbook report generator if I just go and build the report, you'll see that I've now got that populated with the simple flow of operations and steps within them. This can be saved to Excel. You simply press save and then choose where you want to save it and what do you want to save it as. But going back to the actual application itself and this interface, we can go a lot further down. We call these branches. We can go now to, let's say, cut bar. And against the cut bar, I can add a characteristic. What is a characteristic of cutting that bar? Well, I'm going to say that it's a product, and it's going to be length. Length is the product of cutting the bar. Against length, right mouse click. Then you can start beginning to see what's happening. What's the potential failure mode of the length? Maybe it's too short. Now notice there, I just pressed T. I've educated this uh, piece of software myself. Um, I've built in some words and descriptions, and too short is one of them. So I've not got to type it in, literally just T. You know, I might even have some there. Look, I've got one that's too long. So I could add another potential failure mode, and that one there could be too long. Picking up on this one then, a potential failure mode of it being too short. What is the effect of a bar being too short? Well, I'm going to say that it's scrap. Severity of which you can choose. We'll apply 7 there. Uh, the bit for too long, you can add an effect of rework. Again, severity of which maybe 3. So back to the scrap there, too short, I can add a cause, and the cause might be machine error. Now notice these, you know, I've already got machine error built in and an occurrence of six. I'm reducing opportunity for error. Uh, you know, this is my process. These are my occurrence values that I've got set as an organization. Uh, there may be another cause. So if I go back up here and add another cause, it may be that it was set up incorrectly, I set up error, occurrence of which is a value of 3. Now against these causes, 
What do you have in place to actually detect or prevent that machine from making an error? I've got nothing to detect it. The only thing to prevent it is, let's say it's a weekly machine check. Detection of which, I don't know, is pretty uh, not, not that good. So I'll give that a value of 4. You notice across the bottom, the chain in calculating the RPN is there, 168. You can see that it's in bold writing and what's being used. It's scrap, machine error, and it's the weekly machine check. Automatically, I've got the software set to say anything above 100, please take an action for me. Flag it, I need to take an action against it. And if I just click on this RPM value now, you'll see that the properties box changes in the middle and I can uh, now type in what it is I'm going to do and who buy so tomorrow comes the action taken and we've introduced a daily check severity of which for scrap is always going to be quite high I'm hopeful that uh, I've reduced the detection and I'm hopeful that I've reduced the occurrence of which I've now got a new RPM value calculated. So all this populates a FMEA. And if I just go and locate my template, and there it is, and just build the report, you'll see that against the process step numbers, there's a breakdown now of each one of those right across to the actions and what's been taken in the new RPM. Now this tool as well as being very easy to use and understand from the branches point of view we also recognize that organizations will have common processes so we wanted to introduce a library function when you're using it for the first time yes you're going to go through the time to create all these operations and branches right down to the RPM values. But what if we could add those to a library? If I just show you the library here, I've already got built in some known operations. And there's one there, look, 30 clean. So against this op 30, instead of me having to go through it all again, I can right mouse click and I can update from library and I can choose op 30 and I can update to the FMEA. And you'll see now that operation 30 has got all the associated steps, characteristics, potential failure modes, effects and causes associated with it. I can even add to the FMEA straight from it. So I'm not updating an existing operation. So I can right mouse click, add from library, and 40 might be weld, add to FMEA. I could choose 50 add to FMEA and you'll see now I've got operations 10 through to 50 if I go to my output build report you see now I've got all that information being populated and these forms again just like the process flow that I've shown you can be saved to Excel and that's an introduction to Visual FMEA